So in 1967, two professors, one of them is called Seligman and his colleague uh, Maya, they did an experiment over a group of dogs that was dubbed land helplessness. For those of you that work in the field of psychology, that's not a new term. And they classified dogs into two groups and, in, and they placed those dogs into two different cages. And in one of the cages, there, in both cages rather, there was an electric shock on the floor that would occasionally shock the dogs and cause a lot of pain. In one of the cages, they provided a little button where if a dog pressed that button, it disconnected the current from the floor and the shock stopped. So in this cage, the dogs had control over the current and they would stop the shock. But in this other cage, there was no provision for a control button. So the dog sort of got accustomed to that pain. In the second phase of that experiment, they interchanged and brought these dogs that were in the cage that didn't have a button to this other cage that had a control button. And they report that the dogs did not make any attempt to, to press the button because they had already learned how to cope with the pain of the shock because in the first phase, they realized they didn't have control over that. In the third phase of the experiment, they took these dogs that were in the first cage and they placed them in a cage that had a little, the, the wall was a bit short where a dog would easily jump out. And when the floor was, was, um, was electrocuted, the dogs did not even make an attempt of jumping out because they had already become accustomed to the pain and in their minds it had been registered they didn't have any control over that pain. Out of that they developed what is called land helplessness. It's a popular word, word in the psychological world today where human beings or people tend to accept conditions and situations and circumstances where they feel they don't have control over. That when we come through life moments where we feel like there's nothing we can do about a given situation, we tend to become accustomed and accept it. It was true of those dogs, but it's also true in our lives in a very significant way. That possibly some of us have gone through certain seasons or experiences in life that have broken us, have wounded us, has dented our sense of ambition and hope. And we have settled and accepted it as our new reality, especially because we don't have control or we feel a sense of not having control over that. Let me juggle your mind a little bit in scripture. Sarah and Abraham had been trusting God for a child. And in fact, God had promised them that he'd give them a son. And I'm, I'm imagining Sarah growing older and making prayer and saying, Lord, don't get me, don't let me get to 45. Don't let me get to menopause before the child comes, the biological clock was ticking against them and they get there and the child is not there. They keep growing older and older and somehow they accept this as a reality that probably this is it for me. So much so that when God finally comes through at 90 and says to Sarah and Abraham, you're going to get a child, they can actually afford to laugh about it and whisk it away. Reason? Yo. You had all the time and chance to do that. Why wait till we are too old? This can't happen biologically. The clock is against us. And they have accepted a condition in as far as God has an opposite word or something different he's saying concerning this situation. They laugh off the promise of God. It's the same thing we see with the widow. Uh, I'm not a widow. The, the, the woman that hosts Elisha and Gehazi in the book of Kings. And the Bible says she was a well-to-do woman. And, and, and Elisha and Gehazi experience her generosity. And they ask her, what can we do for you? She says, I'm a well-to-do woman. I have all I need. She doesn't ask for anything. Gehazi notices that in this house, there's no baby. He whispers to Elisha. And they prophesy and say, next year, a time like this, there will be the cry of a child in this house. She's not so excited, but indeed it happens. But the Bible says that shortly after, the baby dies and the woman goes back to the prophet. And what does she say? Did I ask you to raise up my hope only for me to be disappointed? And what do we see in that? She had made peace with her condition. She didn't see any need to hope. She didn't see any need to be ambitious about anything. Because we are told it's the hope that disappoints. But the hope in what? If your hope is placed on, 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 on the natural time, the biological clock, by this time this should have happened, 
you're most likely to be disappointed. Possibly that's what some of us are experiencing insofar as our relationship life is concerned. But I came to tell you today there is the chronos time. And what that simply means is the set time for which God has ordained certain things to happen in your life. Many times it will be in conflict with the natural time you expect. But because most of us have learned helplessness, we don't see the need to hope again. But I'm here through this series to stir up your mind and help you to hope again. Why? Because God has a good plan concerning your life. Join me in my next video as we explore this further and see how land helplessness can make us to suffer in a place where God has already provided a door for you and I to exit. Thank you for watching. God bless you. And I pray that you'll receive grace to unlearn every helplessness you've accustomed your mind to and open up yourself for God to do what he has intended to do. See you in our next episode.